my name is Steph, and let me introduce our family. It's DG, Dirty Fred, Leslie, Abby, Kendall, Jabari, Isaac G. All right, let's get at it. All right, welcome back. So now we're gonna focus on some core engagement. So understanding for the body, the core is probably one of the most important parts to make sure when it comes to stability, balance, and control throughout all your other exercises. So we're gonna start off with something that everybody can do. So we're gonna do a pillar. So we're gonna all get down. So make sure once you go down, you keep your core engaged first. Come down on your forearm. Put your arm placement for comfort. Keep your core engaged, baby. In your mind, it should feel like your butt's elevated a little bit. You don't want to drop your weight. So keep your core tight. You should be able to feel it in your abs. So as we go, we're going to transition. This is what a pillar looks like. So when you go, this is going to get you more pec activation, focusing on the upper body, your shoulders, so you get your stabilizers. So as you transition to upper body exercises, you can engage your core while still loading your upper body. So if you come back here, Brandon is going to do a pillar to plank. So he's activating his, uh, his core throughout the whole movement. He's trying to keep his body from shifting as he goes up and down. So when you talk about the pec and shoulder activation, we have maximum activation on his upper body, and he's still staying controlled and engaged while his, his core is staying locked to keep his hips from dropping. So now we got Jabari. You can do it in a plank or pillar position, but you're gonna do a jumping jack. So the, the part about it is when you go up and down, it keeps your core under, under stress the whole time. So by keeping your core locked with the balance, it creates a, a, content, a tension or a contraction, which is like a uh, resistance component. All right, so set your timers, shoot for a minute. If you can do a minute easily, go to two minutes but continue to push yourself, make sure you got your timer, hit pause, get your reps in, and we'll be right back with you, all right? All right, and now we're back again, staying focused on that good core work. So now we're gonna do a supine toe touch. Supine just means you're flat on your back. The toe touch component is you're gonna touch your toes. So Fred is gonna demonstrate, back flat, try to keep your legs as straight as possible, get that good 90 degree angle, and reach up and touch your toes. So as we come back here and see Isaac, we want to be athletic, so Isaac's going to reach, he's going to explode up. Control down, explode up. Make sure you breathe at the top of the movement. The harder you blow out, the more you contract. So you get more out of each exercise by blowing out at the top of your movement. So now Addy is going to go superstar with it. So arms straight out, she's going to bring her legs and her hands up together and touch at the top of the movement. So when you do this, you want to make sure that as you bring your legs up, you keep your back flat on the ground. As you bring your arms back, you keep it in control. You don't want to drop or let anything just hit the ground, and you don't want to arch in your back. Great job, Addy. And then to our athletic director, Jabari, he just doing what he do, so he added like a, a V up. So as you see when he comes up, his back actually comes up off the ground, and he's getting to his toes. So those are some variations of the same exercise. Make sure you keep your core engaged. Breathe at the top of the movement. Get your reps in. So we try to push for about 20 reps for each set. So push yourself and continue to grow and get better. All right, it's time for you to get my work in. We'll be back, get pause. All right, so now we're back. We're gonna get a little bit of core work. So what we're gonna do is start off. We're gonna come down, make sure you're in a pillar position. So while you're here, all you're gonna do is drive your knee up across your body. Pick it up high as you can. Make sure you keep your butt up. All right, now that we got it, follow me. So as you see, Kendall's core is engaged. Her, everything is tight, and so she's rotating. You wanna get as much rotation as you can, but you don't wanna shift your whole body. So make sure your core is locked in, but you're getting your rotation from your hip. So if you want to speed it up, you can watch Leslie. And it's a little more active. But remember, this is how it needs to be done. Just make sure you keep it controlled. 
All right, so let's get out here and get back to work. Don't forget, eight sets of 10, hit pause. Let's get that work. Let's eat. All right, hey fam, come on in, come on in. Let me show you something. So what we're about to do right now is some six inches. We're gonna get that real core work in. So follow me, we're gonna come back here with Isaac real quick, because I want y'all to be safe first. So we're gonna get the six inches, get them legs up, get them legs up. And so he has his hands underneath his lumbar. So if you have back problems or other stability issues directly uh, related to your back, especially your lower back, make sure you put your hands back there for safety. So now we're gonna come up here. Fred, show me something. So he got these six inches, right? But he wanted to add a little bit more stress to the workout. So by extending your hands, you put more focus on your core. So the further your extremities are from your base, the more focus or pull you have on your core. Just like any other movement, wherever the connection point is, the further your extremities are away, you put more stress on that connection point. So now we're gonna get active with the movement. So as we come over, Addy, good work. So she got her six inches, she got her core engaged. She's making sure that her back is flat, and now she's gonna flutter. So by fluttering, you're gonna keep constant engagement on your core, but you have to isolate to your legs, you have to pull. So you got your hip flexors have to engage, but keeping your core stable to flutter your legs. So make sure when you're doing it, you're, you're not letting your feet hit the ground, and you're not kicking up too high, but you're keeping that focus directly on your core. So we're gonna come back here to Jabari. Jabari, let me get some movement. So, same thing. Make sure that lower back is flat, that core is tight. So your opening and closing is based on how far you can move, but now you got adduction and abduction engaged in your exercise. So now if you're feeling really excited, you can get that good scissor crisscross going, and so you get a little bit more movement, but make sure you keep your body in control and you're not shifting the movement. As you see, all the movement's only in his legs, but his core is stable and engaged. So as I get down here and get mine, y'all go ahead and get down and get yours. Set your timer, get your minute, make sure that you always time yourself and push yourself. I'm gonna try to get these three minutes because that's what they told me to do. All right.